Well, hello. Hola. All right, Lauren, you know what video I have to make here. How much have you spent on film recently? Oh, last year I spent $20,000. $20,000 on film. Here's the question I have for you. Do you feel like the photos themselves look $20,000 better, or do you think that your client's perception of you is worth an additional $20,000, and that's why you continue down this insane road? Lauren Jonas is an amazing wedding photographer, and the reason I know that is because she had an absolutely incredible teacher. And uh, soon after she stopped shooting with me, she betrayed me and started shooting with film. Now, I've always loved giving Lauren crap for this because I've said, you can make your images look bad in post if you want to. You don't have to shoot film and pay tens of thousands of dollars for your images to look blurry and grainy. There's software for that. But she always says, Lee, you just don't understand the skin tones and the colors that you get from film and my special film processing technique cannot be replicated digitally. Uh, I feel like it sets me apart and I feel like I'm trying to achieve uh, a, a different niche market. Yeah. Um, the luxury, luxury weddings, they're, for the most part, I see a lot more film photographers being hired. Now, if you've been following us for the last few months, you know that we've done a lot of videos with Alien Skins Exposure X4 software. I run all of my pictures through X4 before I send them to print or before I publish them online because it's the easiest software I've ever found to giving your images a look. But what they became famous for was actually replicating film. So I thought it would be really interesting today to take some of Lauren's pictures and then some of our old wedding photos that we took 10 years ago and see if we can get them to look somewhat similar. And if I can pull it off, I think I can finally prove to Lauren that she doesn't have to waste 20 grand a year on film. There's software for that. All right, Lauren, well, I gotta run. I need to destroy your perception of art and photography. I apologize for what I'm about to do. I uh, know, you're about to rip me apart. Oh, <laughs> God. Well, I can't wait either way. And I'll see you guys this week. Yeah, I'm heading into Charleston tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Now, in the past, this software was the best for giving your images a look or replicating film, but over the last decade, they've been updating this program so much that this is really a complete replacement for Adobe Lightroom at this point. Plus, you have all of those film presets built in as well. So it is possible to use this software just as the final step in editing, but now you could also use it from the very beginning. You'd import all the raw files, edit all the raw files, call everything, categorize everything, give them a look, save them, send them to print, everything from this software. It's pretty cool. Let me show you what I have pulled up here. I have five images taken by Lauren, shot on film, and then I have five images actually taken by Patrick. I, I don't even have access to any of my old wedding pictures here in Puerto Rico. These are really old pictures that Patrick took. So let's go through these one by one. This is a very simple black and white portraits. The next one up, we have a shot that Patrick took. This is super low res, but I think that's going to help us replicate film in the long run. Here's a shot of the place setting. Here's a shot that Patrick took of a cake. Uh, here's a shot that Lauren took of uh, some of the bridesmaids. Here are some bridesmaids that Patrick took outside. Here's a shot of the couple, again, shot on film. Here's a shot that Patrick took on digital. And here's a bridal portrait that Lauren took on film and a bridal portrait that Patrick took. Let's start with the easiest picture, the black and white departure shot. Now, if we zoom into this, <laughs> it's so low res. I assume this was taken with medium format. Maybe this was taken with 35 millimeter, but I mean, goodness. Photography in today's standards would say this is undeliverable, but because film is coming back into fashion, this looks artistic now. So you shoot when it gets really dark, you're shooting in black and white. Yeah, uh, at weddings I do a mixture of digital and black and white. I don't, I don't shoot color film at night. And uh, I feel like this will be the easiest to replicate because we don't need resolution. Uh, we can just pump the grain in there. We can add tons of contrast, blow out all the blacks, 
and it should look the exact same, so let's give it a try. All right, so I'm going to click on Patrick's picture here, and then on the left side, I can sort by black and white presets, and this is what's so awesome about this software. You can find the exact film that Lauren's shooting with, and she said she shoots with Ilford 3200, so let's find that. All right, so right here is Ilford Delta 3200. What's funny is Patrick's shot is incredibly low res, and I think it's still too sharp to look like real film. So let's go over to the sharpening and blur tab on the right, and we can add some blur. It's still too sharp. It's still too sharp. We need to add even more blurriness. So as I cycle back and forth between these, it looks like maybe the blacks are a little more crushed in mine than in hers. So I can go up on the right side over here and all of these panels look exactly like they do in Photoshop or in Lightroom. And if we want, we can just reveal some of these blacks just a little bit here. All right, so I feel like this looks pretty similar. We've got a lot of grain in this image. We've removed a lot of the sharpness of the image. We've removed a lot of the contrast of the image, and we kind of have this artistic film looking black and white image. I think these look pretty similar. Let's move on to the next shot. All right, so Lauren's picture here, we have lots of nice bright highlights that are just on the verge of clipping, but they don't seem to be totally clipped. And uh, Patrick's shot of the cake is somewhat similar. The first thing that's driving me crazy is this isn't even straight. So let me crop this. I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to click on color just so it removes all of the black and white films. And let's go to color film. What film are you actually shooting on and are you doing any cross-processing or anything to get the look that you like? So I'm shooting on Kodak Portra 400 and Kodak Portra 800. That's color film. And then for black and white, I'm choosing Ilford HP5 and then Ilford 3200. And to get the look that I want, to get the bright and airy look, Portra, they recommend you shoot it at 320. If you're... Okay, so you're overexposing by about a half a stop. Correct. And then on Portra 800, I'm shooting at 640. Half stop. Completely different on Fujifilm, by the way. Great. Now, Lauren said she uses Kodak Portra. And there's a few different Portra options here. And I don't know what the difference is between NC and VC. But we're just going to have to choose one. And let's see if we go back to Lauren's. I mean, it's pretty close. It's pretty close already. Without doing anything, it's pretty close. Now, one thing that you'll notice again is the blacks aren't crushed in Lauren's image. I thought there would be a lot more completely black parts of a film image, but it's almost a little faded looking. So let's see if we can do that. Now, once again, looking at these two shots, I just feel like Patrick's shot, even though this is a super low res image, is too sharp. <laughs> Everybody says that film has so much more detail. I just have never found that to be true. So I'm gonna go into the blur section. I'm gonna start blurring this image. All right. I feel like we got it. Next up. This is where things are going to get a little bit more difficult. Trying to replicate skin tone is always the hardest part. And Patrick has already done a lot with this image. This has obviously been processed. He's really pushed the saturation and the vibrance and the sharpness and everything. So I don't know that this is going to uh, be as easy as the other two shots, but let's see. I'm going to go ahead and click. Kodak Portra. So I'm having a hard time getting the skin tones to match up here. So I'm going to go through and just search through all of these other color films that we have 
just to see if I can find something to get us a little bit closer. And look at this. Kodachrome 35 millimeter skin tone brown. I didn't even know this was in here. If I scroll down on the right, I can go through and affect individual colors here. So in Lauren's shot, the greens are really desaturated, the greens and the yellows. I don't want to go too far with it, but just a little bit. We are getting pretty close here. Pretty close. Now keep in mind, don't just keep your eyes on the background. I understand the background's totally different. It's blown out in Lauren's shot. But I'm just talking about the overall color tones of these images look pretty similar. And if I zoom in here and look at the grain, very grainy on the face. We don't have any grain on this shot yet, or at least not that much. Let's add some grain. And going back to the other shot and just looking at sharpness, I feel like, once again, we, we have too much sharpness in this digital image. All right, I think we've gotten pretty close. I must admit, I, I really like the look of Lauren's shot here. There's definitely some magic going on. There's some film magic here that uh, having a little trouble getting exactly. But at the same time, these two images are so different and I think Patrick's image has been strobed. So that really changes the vibe of these shots a lot. So it's hard to compare these two images side by side and try to make them look exactly the same. But I think we've gotten pretty close here. I've gotten pretty good at replicating uh, the, I've been using the Sony a7 III lately, mm -hmm. and it is, it's good. But previously, I have never been able to find an almost exact match. And that's the reason I started shooting it, is because I saw this beautiful, I saw the grain, um, you know, the way that it captures motion. That's something that I feel like you cannot do on digital is replicate the grain. You can get close, but getting motion, dancing photos. What do you like mean that. motion? Like motion blur? Yeah, it's just not the same. How is it not the same? Isn't it the exact same? Maybe you should try to shoot motion on black and white. Well, I don't or like my like portraits that. to be blurry, so I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> All right, these two images look pretty similar already. There's not that much difference. There's a lot of yellow in the leaves that I can tone down. The skin tone, maybe a little more pinkish in Lauren's film shot than in Patrick's shot. But let's go ahead and go back up to our standard film. And let's go to Kodak Portra again. I wonder if she was shooting with 400 speed film or something faster because if I zoom in here, there's definitely grain, but there's not as much grain as we've seen in other pictures. And notice all the grain in the background there. But on their faces, it's not an overwhelming amount of grain. And I feel like Patrick's shot has too much grain going on. So I'm going to choose a slower speed of the Portra. I feel like that looks better. That's very close. Okay, let's try to get rid of some of the yellow that's in these leaves. I'm going to go to the color tab on the right, and the yellows, I'm just going to push it towards the green side to turn all of the yellow into green. Now, there's a little bit of warmth in the skin tones of Lauren's shot, and specifically looking at this guy here, he looks a little bit cold. I'm going to go up to basic, and I'm just gonna push the temperature of the image. Now, one other difference that I'm seeing in Lauren's shot here is that she's got some really beautiful shallow depth of field. And I think she was shooting this on a medium format camera body and lens. And because the subject is a little bit closer to the camera, 
the depth of field is really going blurry very, very quickly. Now, I could try to fake this a little bit under the uh, Boca panel on the right. I could move this right over our subjects. And just add a little bit of bokeh. And if I wanted to, you know, if I didn't want it hitting, maybe like that is better. I feel like that is right on the money. I think it's beautiful. I mean, that's the reason I picked it up to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, having to change the role or the sound, it's a little bit more artistic for me. It feels more artistic to me. All right, final shot. This one's going to be difficult. We've got some really interesting pinkish, brownish skin tones. I've definitely never seen a digital image look like this. Uh, we've also got some really interesting muted looking greens. Uh, let's see if we can pull this off. Patrick's shot is obviously super vibrant. All right, take a look at what the Fuji Pro 160S is doing before and after. It's bumping her skin tones up a little bit. We're getting a little bit closer to that pinkish hue. Let's start with this. Now, the first thing I want to do, I want to remove the yellows from the green grass. See if we can get to that dark green color a little bit more. So by pushing the yellow hue over to the green side, I can get the yellow out, but now our green is still too saturated. So I'm gonna go down to the saturation tab and then slide the green and the yellow slider down just to try to get those green tones to match a little bit better. That's pretty close. Now Patrick's shot has a lot more contrast. So let's remove that. Pretty close. I feel like Lauren's film shot is a lot more bright and airy feeling, so let's push that. So if you cycle before and after what we've done here, we have really killed the contrast on this image. We're getting it close. I am having trouble getting that perfect creamy skin tone color. Under the color panel, you can go in and you can mess with each one of these sliders individually. That's what I've been doing. But if you click on this button right up here, you can adjust the hue, saturation, or luminance individually of specific colors. So I could click on her face and just change the colors of her face. What I'm trying to do is just find that pinkish tone that I like about Lauren's image. I can do the same thing with saturation here. I could raise the saturation of that tone. Find that sweet spot. All right, I feel like we're getting pretty close here. If I zoom in and look at the grain here, we definitely have some decent film grain here. Let's see what it looks like on this image. Again, I feel like we're too sharp. And there's also a grain panel down here where we can add grain, change the shape of the grain, choose whether we want the grain in the overall image, the shadows, the highlights, or the midtones. There's so much we can do to fine tune this. Now, as I look at this last shot, I have to admit, there is something magical about Lauren's shot. And I think if I was using a raw file, uh, if, I, if I had a little bit more time, if I wanted to get into layers and masks, you can do all of this in Exposure X4. I'm sure I could get it closer, but keep in mind, I am using a ultra low res shot that was saved on the web by Patrick 10 years ago. I don't have this raw file anymore. But 
I think I've still proven my point. If I can, will it change your perception of $20,000 film or does it not even matter to you? You can get so close. You can get 95% of the way to that film look if you want to, and you don't have to go out and pay for film and processing. Keep in mind that I don't even use this software to make my images look like film. I personally don't always like the look of film. I think film a lot of times just looks really low res and grainy and I don't necessarily want my images to look like that. Sometimes I do, but a lot of times I don't. A lot of times I just wanna tweak my colors just a little bit to add some interest to my shot, to make it seem like my images weren't printed directly out of the camera. And that's what I feel like Exposure X4 is so good at. If the average person looked at each one of these images side by side, they would have no way of knowing which one of these shots was taken with film and which one was taken digitally. So if you're interested in Exposure X4, I'm happy to say this software is 100% free to try. If you end up liking it and you decide to buy it, use the code below, you can save 10%. Give everybody at home a shout out. Do you do the Instagrams like all the youngsters these days? I do do Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is my name, first and last name, with an underscore at the end, Lauren Jonas underscore. Uh, I have Facebook, but I don't really think people use Facebook anymore. I do, Lauren. That's the <laughs> only one I use. <laughs> I know. My use Facebook. Yeah, okay. it's me and my mom. We use Facebook together. All right. For more information just like this, head over to fstoppers.com, and if you'd like to check out our full-length photography tutorials, many of which end in Exposure X4 when we're fine-tuning our pictures, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.